Hey, you down here. Okay. Well, guess what? Booted up my computer today, just now. The Lenovo i5 that I use every day is my main computer. And uh, that's what I got. If I could hold still, maybe you could read it. Oh, that's worse. Um, it tried to... It didn't see the hard drive, and it tried to pixie boot to the network. And of course, I don't use, I don't have that set up, so there wouldn't be anything there. And uh, I figured it out because I saw it, a line in the boot. This is Fedora 20. Whoops, sorry, my nose was itching. I had to scratch it, and I couldn't hold my phone still. Uh, <coughs> anyway, I, I noticed that the boots, you know, the, uh, the the command line readout in the during the boot. Uh, it, that always shows in uh, most Linux systems. Uh, well, actually, it doesn't always show. Sorry about that. I, I always hit a, a key on the keyboard to try to get it. I can't hold still to save my life. To try to get it to show so I can know what's going on. I did. But this time, I don't I don't think I ever got that far because it did it. If there's something wrong, it'll, it'll come up with the... Uh, Command, CLI, the command line interface, so you can see what's going on. So, uh, something unusual, you know. And so it was trying to boot to the network, and uh, noticed that. And uh, in the error 1962, no operating system found, press any uh, key to reboot, to repeat the boot sequence. So, let's try that. And uh, I just woke up and can't hardly hold it. Can't hardly uh, <laughs> can't really do anything right now. But I wanted to try to. I wanted a record of this for myself. So it's trying to reboot, but it's just doing D. I saw that. See DHC DH client MAC address and then DHCP. And I thought, wait a minute. The only reason it would be doing that is because uh, it's uh, why well, hasn't it already got its DHCP? You know, address via DHCP. Why is it showing that? And then I realized, oh, it's looking. I think I thought, oh, I think that's Pixie Boot. See, it hadn't even got to the point where it says it's going to Pixie Boot yet. I call it Pixie Boot because that's just what it looks like to me. PXE Network Boot. Exiting the boot agent. No operating system found. So, <coughs> I just wanted to see what it would do. I figured it wouldn't boot, but why in the world, uh, you know, it doesn't see the op the hard drive? I have no, I don't know. Uh, I don't remember this ever happening on this machine. The hard drive could have failed, but usually they haven't. For some reason, sometimes they just don't see them, you know. Uh, usually it's got something to do with, like, a power. If the power goes out, uh, like, I've been asleep, you know, actually for, I, went to I, I don't know how many hours, but a long time. I went to bed about 12, p uh, 12, p 12 to 1 p.m. yesterday, slept all afternoon and all night and woke up about five this morning so you know that's 12 13 14 15 16 17 at least 17 hours so <clears throat> of course i felt rotten and i needed to eat and i and i did and all that but i still feel rotten so here's the uh, machine somewhere in here um that's where i that's why I have it, the Lenovo i5. It's a quad core with. Uh, I'm going to hard shut it down. And it's quad core with um, 4 gig of RAM, Lenovo uh, i5, Intel i5 processor. So we'll turn it back on and see if it just works or if we've got a real problem or not. I also have two uh, USB backup drives plugged into it to get USBs, but I didn't. Un I thought about unplugging them, uh, but uh, it doesn't try to boot to them. You know, some machines will try to boot to the USB drives, and there's nothing to boot on there. Okay, it's doing it again. Uh, there's nothing to boot on there, and uh, for some reason it doesn't. You know what? What they'll do sometimes. Some uh, there's different ways you can set your boot order, but uh, if if it's set to USB, you know, external drives first, like USB drives, then uh, you don't see anything. Then it'll try to boot to them, and then it'll go on and find the hard drive and boot to it. But 
sometimes they just, you know, <clears throat> they get whacked out. How, I don't know, you know, exactly what happens, but after the last 20 years of messing with, you know, desktop and laptops, machines, every day, uh, I've seen that happen enough times. So, uh, <clears throat> I guess what I'll do then is, uh, <coughs> let's just turn it off. And, and uh, Get down here where my. I, I don't think you're going to see much, are you? But I've got the uh, power bricks plugged into extension cord here so that I can get to them. And, uh, yeah, I was just watching some videos where, everybody, you know, people were trying to. There we go. Trying to do things one handed and hold the phone in one hand. I was like, get a tripod. I got tired of watching it, you know. Uh, now I'm doing it. But sometimes, you know, you just don't. Don't have uh, takes so long to get things set up. <sighs> that one don't want to come out. <sighs> you got to be careful. You shock yourself if you touch those. There we go. If you touch those those leads, then you're gonna be in trouble. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and turn it back on again and see if that that's what has happened. That the boot sequence is gotten out of whack somewhere, and it's looking at those hard drives instead of the those USB drives instead of the hard drive and it's for some reason not you know not going on looking to the hard drive uh, it's taking a little longer didn't go straight to pixie boots so that might be a good sign then again maybe it's really looking for the hard drive See, it, it would see those, uh, if it didn't see the hard drive, the way I have it sh normally set, if it didn't see the hard drive, it would look at the USBs, and then, and nothing there, then it would go to Pixie Boot. But I thought I had Pixie Boot. I usually turn Pixie Boot off because it, take, it, it uh, takes forever sometimes, like right now, to go through it all uh, before you get to do anything about it. You don't want to just force shut it down in the middle of it. Uh, you might make things worse. So, uh, <clears throat> that must have been what it was. It was going straight on through. Uh, there was USBs there, so it was going straight on through to them. Now that I unplugged them, you know, there's nothing there. So, uh, now it's really uh, taking its time to... It's, the lights are on. It's not, you know, it's... And uh, let me hit, hit a key on the keyboard. See if it's just... Oh, I don't know if I did that or it went more. There we go. Now I see the cursor. So that sometimes that'll help you see what the heck's going on. Uh, so all I got is a cursor blinking. In the boot sequence on in Linux, it doesn't really matter what key you hit, except for like if you're trying to go to a different boot order or something. Uh, <coughs> Then you know, of course, the function keys. It, like I think, let's see on this machine, I think an F11. There we go. Okay, now it's going finally going, trying to do Pixie Boot. Now that's what'll happen typically. If uh, if all you get's a hard drive, you know, uh, it'll take a long time like that, and then go to Pixie Boot. Uh, I may have left Pixie Boot on because. When you don't have it on, then it will just hang there forever with that black cursor on the black screen, and you won't really know what's going on. But if if you see it end up going to Pixie Boot, then you know, oh, okay, it doesn't see the hard drive. <laughs> I don't think it gives that message on this machine. Uh, all the BIOSes are just a little bit different, you know, and I think it doesn't give a no hard drive message. It, well, some I don't know about I can't remember, but some machines won't give you a no hard drive message. You just sit there and with the black screen and the cursor forever. Um, so if you leave Pixie Boot on, that's a way for it to get it to tell you what's going on. You know, get you get you, get you something to know what's going on. Um, so um, and oh yeah, it's to that point. No no operating system. Now I'm gonna see if I can hit if I can hit control alt delete with my left right I don't think my finger maybe they can control alt delete yeah with my right hand while I'm holding the phone with my left hand 
and we'll try hitting F12 to see the boot menu. It's beeping at me. Uh, I saw, I think F1 would have took us to BIOS and F12 was, I, I can't read fast enough so I skipped. I knew that the second one would be the telling you about the boot menu so I skipped to try to hurry up and read that because I like I said I was thinking it was F11 but uh, we'll see now see it's it's definitely taking a long time to go to anything well, of course I kept hitting F12 over and over I'd have slowed it down there we go we're at the boot menu CD is first network is second Something's gone wonky, and I know the power didn't go out in the house because, um, while well, I was asleep, because my VCR's not blinking. I, have a VC I still have a VCR over there on top of the TV. So uh, we're going to go into setup. Use the arrow keys to navigate up and down, and uh, enter to go into setup. So we're in the BIOS now. You weren't able to just select a boot device, I guess because it doesn't see one. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> so Think Center M91P, that's what its model number is. And uh, BIOS is 711 2011. The mouse is working. Uh, yeah, this is a, one of the newer ones that has a mouse. Uh, you can use the mouse in. Okay, I'm not going to. System summary. Oh, okay. There we go. 2.5 gigahertz I, I, Intel i5 processor. 4.4096 megabyte of RAM, which is four, four gigabyte. Let's see if I can set. I need my right hand to work the keyboard, but well, I guess I'll just swap anyway. I can't hold still anymore with my left hand. It's just can't can't do it any longer. Okay, <clears throat> and I had it, my hand rested on my, my chest, and every time I breathe, it's moving the camera. I can see that. Okay, so. Uh, okay, oh, there we go. Drive one, CD. Yeah, see, it doesn't see the hard drive at all. That's not really a good thing. Um. The bottom entry there, SATA drive two, <coughs> none. So I, sh I hope it hasn't failed completely. I do run uh, backups every day, so I shouldn't lose a lot of data. I'd lose my operating system, but I was getting ready to redo it anyway. I'm gonna, well, I'm getting ready to. <coughs> I, I mean, this is the only machine I got that I can use. <coughs> you know, to do everything. So I've been. It's. Uh, it's outdated. It's Fedora 24 and Fedora 32 is out, but uh, I tend to let that happen because I, once I get a system built up, I uh, just don't want to start over again, you know, uh, rebuilding a new system. So uh, anyway, um, let's go on to the devices. Okay, advanced. I'm not going into every menu. I'm just going to see if I can find anything that might help me. Security. Startup. Whoops. Primary boot sequence. CD, USB. It did that it, when it didn't see the hard drive. It defaulted back to uh, its normal boot sequence. Let's see. Uh, it's much easier for me to do one hand the keyboard with my right hand than my left. So we'll try try getting the camera back in my left hand again. Maybe I can get. <coughs> Yeah, USB key, USB AC, HDD should be number. Well, I usually use, uh, I used to anyway, always make the, you know, CD, DVD drive one, but I don't really, if I have a broken hard drive, I don't boot to that hardly ever. I usually use a USB to fix it, but, uh, 
excluded from the boot order. Yeah, network is excluded, but it went there anyway. Floppy disk, I don't have one. USB floppy disk, I don't have one of those at the bottom there. So 5 HDD is what I would want to be number one. Let's see. Now, over on the right, it'll tell you how to set it. This is one of the, I remember it's one of the weirdest BIOSes I've ever got into. And it's, I got, uh, that now I get stuff down in the bottom excluded, and I have the hardest time getting it back to be included. It doesn't actually work like it tells you guys from what I remember. Let's see. Or I didn't, or I was messing up. Well, I remember going around and around and around with it now that I got in here. Sequence is used when the mouse barely works. It's really weird how it moves. The system is powered up normally. Use the up and down keys to select a device. Plus and minus to move the device up or down. Let's see if that works. X excludes it. Okay, and I think you need to use, I don't know, I always use the, the number pad. But to do this, I always use the number pad on the right of the keyboard. The, the numbers at the top may work too, but Sometimes they don't in these instances. Okay, so select a device. Okay, so the white one, you know, when it went white, it's the one I want. Now then. Okay, it's moving it up like it should. There we go. Now. <clears throat> at the bottom, it'll tell you how to save it and everything. It does have pretty good instructions, more, more than some. You can barely see it because the phone's in my way, but. Escape, exit, plus or minus, change values, enter, select submenu, F9, set up defaults, F10, save and exit. I think I'm going to do save and exit. I was going to go on through the BIOS, but this is what I was looking for. So F10, do I want to save and exit? Yes. Now let's see if that hard drive can be seen. Sometimes the they will do that for, uh, for reasons. Uh, it may be probably what happens is... Uh, Reasons I don't know, but probably what happens is something went kind of wrong with the hard drive and it didn't read, which would be sort of a hardware. I'm not going to hit the setup buttons or anything right now. I'm just going to there. You can't see the whole screen, can you? I can't hardly get that in the right place. <coughs> Maybe I need to. It's sure taking a long time. Let's go ahead and hit F12. That way I can see what it's trying to boot. Might have been hanging up because, yeah, it didn't work because it doesn't see the hard drive. I thought, well, if it's taking that long to go on to the next thing, then we probably have a problem. So the hard drive is not showing. Now, what I what I haven't tried yet, I just now thought of it. What first thing I used to usually do with a desktop? This is a desktop. Well, it's more of a laptop in a box. It has laptop memory, a small laptop looking type. Uh, not It doesn't look like a laptop uh, motherboard, but it's a sm small form factor motherboard. But anyway, it, they, they there's a lot of things in the, this system that is just like a laptop anyway. So yeah, that was the only thing left in the menu was to save stuff. So let's see, primary boot sequence. It still is at the top like it should be but it's not seeing it. Automatic boot sequence. Ah, that's how come it booted to the Pixie boot because it is still in the automatic boot sequence. Huh. You still want the hard drive to be first, so I'm going to put the hard drive at the top. That could be why it's... See, there's this, that, that's kind of unusual to have two separate boot sequences like that. And uh, so I'm going to hit F10 again to save it. Here, <clears throat> I mean, if if the it is possible that the electricity glitched just so shortly that it didn't make the VCR lose its power long enough to lose its memory, but enough to jack this up. There we go. Look at that. Nothing wrong with the hard drive after all. I'm gonna take a guess that the electricity might have, because uh, it was uh, possible of still works last night and everything. Uh, I'm going to guess that the electricity glitched in so, such a way so quickly. Now I'm going to hit a key. This is what I do most of the time. 
and uh, I can see the boot uh, CLI interface, you know, the command line interface for the boot. <coughs> and, um, and the text is so small I can hardly even read it. Now, this is normal right here. It'll hang up trying to mount. Uh, I got install happy, installed some bunch of group installs and stuff. I didn't really know what it was, or I wanted to, thought I'd want to try it out. I knew what most of it was, but. I wanted to try stuff out, and then uh, what this is is uh, can't think. All I can think is Pixie, but these are network. Um, I installed some software to set up network uh, drives, you know, shared on the network, and uh, it didn't work without. It needed some serious m manual setup, and I didn't even want to. Well, it, actually, I just figured out for sure that's what this was. Uh, recently I'd looked at it several times it'll tell you a bunch of commands to run to try to fix it but um, anyway dev mapper is a, a mount well and it shows you what it's trying to mount it's trying to mount swap it's trying to mount root it's going back and forth trying to mount them and it he's not working and uh, <coughs> started to say oh, I'll move up and it, now it's all gone see it finally gave up um, I was just fixing to move in closer where you might can see it, and then it, it was done trying. But uh, I ran all the commands a couple of times uh, that it said to maybe fix that, and it said it did it all, but it still didn't ever work. So every since, I mean, it was within the first six months that I installed Fedora 24 years ago <laughs> that I did this, and I've just been leaving it alone because I, I, uh, I didn't want to fool with it. And uh, take makes the boot take like a minute and a half or something instead of like 30 seconds. So, uh, yeah, don't get too install happy. <coughs> so, uh, I was using group install commands to install, get to build up the system the way I wanted it. And I always see more uh, stuff. Oh, that looks interesting. Oh, that looks interesting. And what I did is I built a script and then I run the script to install it all. I run the group. Um, what I do is I run the group find find groups commands and uh, and I don't remember them. I have to go back and look at an article that I saved years ago, but uh, about Fedora. But uh, <clears throat> definitely beats going through the uh, searching in the uh, DNF uh, command. Uh, I like the graphic user interface very much better than anything, but. It is DNF is very slow. Yum was was much quicker, but I used to spend hours, days, weeks in in Yum, you know, finding stuff and installing it. And you you can select, you know, as many as you want. But a lot of times, if you say you select thirty different apps to install, and then five of them don't don't want to work right, and but it doesn't tell you which ones, and you have to go try to figure out. Well, it does if you read all the readout. But anyway, it depends on the error whether it tells you. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, you got to go find out which ones and, and take and their dependencies and stuff, you know, and take them out so that you can finish your install. And if you do it in the command line with, uh, well, with doing it with the script, you can put a, a line in there that or a, co uh, a switch in there that will say, um, I don't know what really where the it's not a whole line, but it's not might not be a switch either. But anyway, you put in a couple of commands that say uh, skip, well, skip broken. It's like a space dash skip broken I think is what it is but anyway um, and it will go ahead and install everything that it can <coughs> so uh, that's kind of a dirty way to do it down in, uh, because uh, you will have you may have some stuff installed that turn into orphans because they can't work because they're missing their dependencies but um, it doesn't make the system usually hardly ever makes the system run bad or anything. It's just that whatever some apps will show up in your GUI and you try to start them and they won't start, you know, and you don't know why. Uh, you might be able, you could probably find it out, but you have to do some research, you know. And what I usually do is just use the ones that, that I that I'm interested in and leave the rest alone. I'll install t ten times more apps than I need, and then but once in a while there's you know, like when you need something really bad, you know what you want to do, but you don't know the name of the app or any of that. And you don't want to spend three hours looking for stuff and installing it. If it's already installed, then all you got to do is just find it on your system. And I use uh, XFCE's App Finder app. I put it on all my systems. Well, there we go. We're booted up.
I don't know what in the world happened. I'm very glad to see that it, uh, it's not. Uh, let's go ahead and log in. Actually, did that with one hand. That's really hard for me to do. <coughs> um, very glad to see that it's you know working and everything. That it's not a broke. I thought you know if the file system broke or something, I might have to boot it up to a USB and do a do some work on it. You know, it's not real hard to do that, but usually with Linux, especially Fedora. Uh, it's more likely that something funky went on in your hardware or your soft BIOS software, you know, than it is, uh, or firmware, you might want to call it, uh, than it is the actual hardware, unless you got hardware with problems, you know. I mean, the hard drive is what I'm trying to say. But, um, yes, I've got, a, I've got the camera in the best spot I've had it so far, I think, but I can't stay there. My arm's starting to cramp. I have to hold the camera like six inches from my face to get the whole monitor in there. And uh, that's got my arm in the weirdest position, you know. And it can't, I can't really, I can set this, well I have the camera mounted on a, it's a giant paper clip and an actual wooden stick off of a clothes tree. It's turned on a lathe and it looks nice. It's my own selfie stick, homemade, it's not a homemade, I didn't make it, but it's more of a hack. It's, it's my hack selfie stick. I just put some stuff together. Stuff that was intended for one thing and used it for another thing. That's what a hack really is. Okay, so uh, it has nothing to do with software, kids. When I was young, people, old men used to always say, they build something and you'd say, oh, that's cool. How'd you, where'd you get all that? You know, how'd you build that? Oh, I just hacked it together. They'd take a bunch of old broken stuff and or stuff they didn't want anymore and cut it up with a hacksaw and turn it into some some other kind of machine, you know, some other kind of thing. Might be a machine or it might be a, a, a gate for a, a fence or something, whatever. They hack it together. That's what hacking is. All right, so um, if it doesn't involve a hacksaw, it's not a hack. I'm just kind of kidding because everybody... On one of my favorite... I used to... Well, I still do read it quite a bit. Hackaday.com, they're... First comment you get about every project is that's not a hack, and so uh, I I don't ever I don't like to get into all that back and forth stuff. I don't hardly ever comment, but I would think to myself I should say every time that's not a hack because you didn't use a hacksaw. But anyway, um, there it is, booted up, ready to go. Except for my hard drives are not. Uh, uh, yeah, USB drives aren't plugged in, so let's, let's see if I can plug them back up with one hand. And, uh, actually, I think I can because how do you do this? Oh yeah, you can only you've only got a couple, one or two choices here. Oh, I'm not showing where I'm at. So this one, yeah, I've got. Is that all the way in? Yep. So this one, I'm using every spot on this. So. Yeah, that's not going to work. That layout's not going to work the way I wanted it to. But it mounted the drive, so I'm going to leave it. Uh, not for any reason other than the direction that the cab uh, cables are pointing. That's the only thing I don't like about this. But it won't be a big deal, really. I'll just turn this one around. I'm not going to like that. But see, now that one's bent where it's being pulled in them. And that, that's the quickest way to break the con or the conductors inside of a cable of any kind is to bend them sharply like that. So I don't like that. But since I'm going to be shoving it back out here and there'll be a lot less stress on it. Yeah, there we go. I think I'll, yeah, I'll leave it right there. I'm sure you can't. A lot of times... It, the, the screen on this phone looks darker than the video turns out, so I'm counting on that. And my pillow that I put behind my neck is falling every time I move, so let's put it down. <coughs> so good. 
lately, the one problem I've been having, see those uh, Seagate, uh, eight terabyte USB and Seagate expansion drive, they're both Seagates, the eight terabyte is, I renamed it and reformatted it to EXT4 because of the, the first one I bought, the five terabyte, the, you know, they just name them all Seagate expansion drive. Well, I needed to tell the difference between them. Uh, and uh, so I did that, but, uh, uh, the other first one I bought, I did. I left it in TFS, and I was sorry I did. After I got a bunch of files on there, it would uh, sometimes when the power would go out, or usually when the power would go out, or or uh, or my uh, I used to plug my the drives into the power strips down there. You saw the lights, I'm sure, of the power strips I used, and uh, I would turn them. I would always turn them off after the sh after I shut down the computer. Well, a lot of times I would forget and turn them off before. The computer had finished shutting down and it would not usually it didn't but sometimes it would cause that break that NTF file system usually what happened is the weather did it you know did a did a number on electricity and it went on and off or off for a long time you know hour, 30 minutes or an hour or two and then back on and it would uh, break that NTFS file system and it always scared me because at the time that's the only backup drive I had and it, I would have to uh fix it, you know, I'd have to uh, run the uh, fix disk commands and stuff for, for Windows. I'd have to I'd have to plug it in. Well, I don't, this machine, I do have a Windows XP virtual machine, but used to, you could always access, I used to always be able to access USB drives with it, but uh, I don't know if they changed how it worked or if they stopped allowing you to do that, you know, with, I'm talking about in the uh, Virtual box, Oracle virtual box. Uh, I don't know if they quit uh, allowing you to do it. It could be because of their USB hard drives instead of regular USB sticks, too. I, I, I kind of forget that sometimes. But uh, whatever the reason is, I still can't get it to work for, ever since about Fedora 24, I think. I know it works perfectly in Fedora 14. I still, that system right there that I hardly ever use it used to be my main system. That's a dual core 1.8 gigahertz. I used to do it in there all the time. But anyway, so I would have to, uh, well, I used to use that laptop. It has XP Home and Devane on it, but it uh, XP, you can't even use it. It's I've cleaned it a hundred times. Nothing shows up to be in it, but it won't It won't even run. It'll, it's a slow, you can't use it. And I never did, uh, I didn't erase it though. I guess, I don't know why. At the time, I guess they both worked when I put for the main aid on it, but it's sitting there running all the time now. It's my web server. So uh, anyway, <coughs> in order to fix that USB drive, I don't have any other Windows systems running. I don't use Windows hardly ever. Uh, just when I ha have to have it to do what I need to do. So uh, that's what I would have to do is rig something up to uh, to be able to work on that USB drive. Uh, and I used to have. The Windows 7 system set up, but it got fit. Well, there was this one time when I had like three, I think I had three wi uh, three Windows 7 systems going in that I could turn on at any time, and somehow, I hardly ever even use them and get online with them, but somehow I got a network virus that messed them all up. And so, after that, I just, I spent, you know, hours and hours, days and days cleaning them up, and after that, I was so dis and they still, I still didn't trust them. After I did all that, I kept telling myself, "Why are you doing this? You know, you're not going to trust them." Did it anyway, and then uh, that. Uh, well, I have another laptop, a Dell. This is a Dell 6000, an old one, 1 1.6 gigahertz single core, and I have a dual core Dell 1525, which my mom's using now as her machine. And I, uh, <coughs> I'm just showing my screen and talking. Doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? And I, uh, do I can't hold that up. So, um, well, we'll do it anyway. Okay, so, um, um, yeah, now I went blank. Yeah, I used to use that laptop for my Windows needs, you know, but, uh, So when, after I scanned it, literally, I believe it was 10 times that I scanned it before I got it to stop coming up with some kind of malware on it, you know. Uh, I, it was running so slow. It, it still acted like there was malware on it. It would, uh, 
uh, but I, it was a certain, I, I don't remember the name of the process, some certain Windows process that was using up so much resources that I couldn't really use the thing. Uh, it drove me crazy trying to use it. And it used to work pretty good. It could have been a Windows update that, you know, that was too, uh, too bloated. It's probably what it really was after, all in all, after, th you know, uh, I tried and tried to figure out what it was and turn it off, you know. Uh, Anyway, I reformatted that thing. I put Domain 9, I think, on it now. Yeah, Domain 9, and then I ended up, uh, my mom using it. and uh, So I never did put Windows back on any other machines. I've got several, you know, Windows license, licenses I could use on different machines, but they've all got, they either need, don't have anything on them to make them run, or they uh, have a Linux, one, you know, either Fedora or Domain Linux on them. All right, I'm glad that that's working. Oh yeah, I was gonna say about the these drives mounting. I started to say it, and then I forgot. Uh, well, what's been happening? One thing that has happened lately is uh, the machine boots up perfectly, no problems, but the drives don't mount. And uh, if I unplug them and plug them back in while the machine's running, I just get an error saying you don't have permission to mount the drives. Um, we're just trying to mount them as regular user dawn and if they are plugged in already then they mount uh, during boot by user root and everything's fine but um, that was happening every you know every day I was, I, I was one day I was kind of like this I get on the machine and they don't mount and I want them to mount so I, everything can back up and so I fiddle with them for an hour or so you know finally got them to mount on, trying different things, unplugging them and plugging them back in and all that stuff. And they did st start working. I thought, okay, everything's fine again. And then, but they did it two or three, four different days after that. And then after that, I just quit. I just said, well, forget it. Next time I reboot it, probably be okay. You know, I wasn't worried about them. I was afraid there was something wrong with them first. But, uh, anyway, well, there we go. That's all, that's, uh, Sometimes you, you might have something you think is catastrophic and it's actually just some kind of a, I would say a combination hardware and software bug, you know, so, uh, as in uh, because, you know, it's not like a bug, like an error in the code really, it's just uh, if the, uh, I've seen it happen when I knew what happened and it's usually if, like if you hard shut one down, uh, in the middle, like say it does, if something hangs up and you just hard shut it down, you may cause that to happen. Or if you do it over, like say if you're doing, you're trying to do something with the hard drive's working on a machine or something, and you keep turning it off by hard shutting, hard shutting it down is holding in the button until it shuts down. If you didn't already know that, um, so um, if you hard shut them down several times in a row, you might cause something like to happen. And I've seen it happen when uh, you know you're sitting right here and the power just blinks off real quick or it goes off and then when it comes back on the machines jacked up like that um, there's might be some sort of I never I really don't know of any particular way you could shut down a machine any desktop machine or a laptop for that matter that would tell it to um, reset the uh, boot sequence back like it was there it was set to the defaults is what happened somehow it's set to the faults and the, what BIOS will do is, if it's a loss of power and it 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 confuses it, I just you know it confuses it, and if something's wrong, it knows that, so it goes back to the defaults. Um, probably all the other, if there, I don't know that there's really any other settings I've changed. I used to always set my BIOSes exactly the way I wanted them. Uh, with the desktop machines, the older ones, and then this one here. This one's getting old now, but what the older machines, there was a lot of things that uh, I didn't like, and I wanted it to do differently, you know. So I would, every every machine, it would be a little bit different depending on the boss that you have, but I would set them all to behave the way I wanted them to. And uh, for instance, well, especially for instance, if you're using a desktop as a server, first thing you want to do is set it to boot back up, always on. If the power goes off and it comes back on, it boots back up so that your server's back up and online. Uh, that's the one disadvantage of using a laptop is that it can't do that. It doesn't have that in the BIOS. And the, the good thing is that it has a battery and it'll stay on for, you know, however long the battery can run, 30 minutes to 
three or four hours, but it doesn't do you any good if the power 